Hello and welcome to Nat Chat. I'm Morella Rich. Today our guest is Celia Denny who has 13 children and she's a homeschool mum as well to all of them, all 12 of them actually. But she'll tell us a little bit more about her amazing story. I call her Miracle Mum because she's calm amongst everything and homeschools all her children. She's amazing. Welcome back. Welcome to the program again this, this week. Yep. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to have 12, 12, 13 children or just a little bit about your background and your children? Um, I guess our story follows that of a lot of people getting married nowadays. John brought into the relationship his own daughter, Cara. She's nearly 30 now and has three of her own children. And I brought Martin. And then um, we'd both, me thanks to Martin and John, when his um, de facto relationship broke up with his daughter's mother, um, became very depressed. And one of the things he did was turn to God in that depression. And um, um, my me having Martin at 18 had sort of woke him up and thought, oh, I've been pretty stupid, but I've got Martin, so now it's time to pick myself up and move on a bit. And we met at university, we were studying. Um, John's come from quite a secular background, quite an unchurched background. Um, and my own background is that my, my mother returned to her Catholic faith when I was about nine and my sister about 10. So she brought us back to church then. So. Um, and I think she's, you know, been trying hard ever since. And, and Dad returned to the church. He's sort of baptised as a baby, but had never bothered um, going to church. And um, so my parents' journey is where mine started, of course, but in, mm. in terms of the faith as well is also where mine started as a, a wake-up. You know, they, they sort of realised too that you know, maybe there were things they should have taught myself and my sister that they had not done because you know, the world said, well, you don't have to teach them those sort of things anymore, you know, about faith and about God and about belief. Um, and um, so John and I met at uni and because I was a Catholic and because the first church he'd wandered into in a very bad state was a Catholic church um, that happened to be open at the time. It wasn't normally open at that hour and he experienced quite a, a rich and deep conversion of his own in a very spiritual way that's often denied to a lot of cradle Catholics for some time. You know, mm. you have to experience your own conversion. Mm. And um, a lot of people who come into the church experience a wonderful conversion that many of us who've grown up as Catholics m might not understand at quite the same level. We have to, we have to experience that, you know, and, and for me that was having Martin and think, oh, you know, it was a wake up call. It was a wonderful baby and he was, um, it just opened a new world, you know, this, this tiny new life. So that, that helped. And then after this, so then you got together, you married each other. Yep. And had how many more children after that? Um, together we've together. had, yeah, t together mm. we've had um, 11. Um, one was stillborn in 2010 after a road accident. Um, and we've had uh, two more, Benedict and Hamish, um, who will be too soon, and, and five, yeah. So we didn't set out to have a big family. Yeah. In fact, I don't even think it was something we discussed. Mm. But we married as, as Catholics. Yeah. Um, John was actually received into the church after we got married. Yeah. Um, so we've just, we, we've lived a Catholic life. I, I do recall after James was born, he was my third and John's third, but, you know, together our second, if you want the maths. Yeah. Um, that was actually the first time I'd read Humane Vitae yeah. after James was born because I was so terribly depressed, like postnatal depression. So that was, mm. um, I thought, well, I need to know some other reasons for having another child because I felt so bad. Um, so I was reading Humane Vitae and I thought, well, this sounds really true. It's difficult. Obviously, it's not enough for some people to say, oh, it sounds true. But I mean, it, it seemed reasonable from what I knew of history and, and human nature, and it seemed based on and grounded on a genuine concern for people and, and marriage and relationships. Can you tell us a little bit about Humane Vitae for those who don't know? It's just a document which defends, sets out, um, promotes and uh, embraces the church's teaching on marriage and family um, as being very pro-life. You know, marriage is a sacrament. Sacraments bring new life. For a married couple, that's a very concrete thing. 
your, your, your sacramental sign is, is a new life. You've got to baptize nine months later. So it's a very real concrete thing that this, this, this outpouring of, of grace and of, of love and of sacrament, sometimes we might think those words a bit sentimental and a bit soft, but they're not. They're, they're very firm. They're, they're, sometimes there's not a lot of comfort in them except to know that you're doing the right thing. And where do people get hold of Humanae Vitae if they want to read it? Online. Just download it. Okay. Or buy it from a bookshop even, mm. I would think. And so that sort of supports the idea of having children and then you just thought, yeah. and then all of a sudden... And but once again, it was never, it's never a conscious thing, oh, we, we want 12 children. It was just mm. simply the fact that um, me falling pregnant again, um, it, was, it was fun. You know, it was about names, especially as the older kids were a little bit older. Mm. It was a case where um, choosing a name for the new sibling became mm. very much a family affair. Yeah. You know, oh, I don't like that. Oh, why are you choosing that? Oh, no. So <laughs> lots yeah, of input. I remember that with my siblings. Yeah. And we were, it was we were very much, it was yeah. a fun, it was something that I had not been exposed to and, and I wouldn't have expected, I, I didn't expect it, but they've all got in on the act of choosing yeah. a name for that new baby, yeah. you know, and say, oh, we don't like that one. So you can't have it. Yeah. Type of thing. Oh, that's beautiful. So it was a joint venture to very much. To choose the yeah. names. That's so lovely. And so then you had, so each, after each child, were you thinking, Oh my gosh! How can we manage with a seventh child, or eighth child, or ninth, or tenth? No, no, it's, it's mm. sort of never been that. Um, I found um, I found three was difficult. I had mm. I had difficulties for having three children. Um, for some reason, that seemed overwhelming. Oh. Um, but not thirteen. <laughs> no. <laughs> so it, it's it's sort of getting on. And suddenly, um, things which I thought were important. Aren't. I know people say that all the time, but it's true. Mm. Um, with a bigger family, we don't go out so often. So when we do, it's fun. Yeah. We go out. I'm not, I'm not stressed. It's, it's just fun. It's Even if it's groceries. Yeah, because yeah, you, just, you yeah. just enjoy each other's company. And you've grown to get to know each other so well. Yeah, and that's to right. know who you are amongst each other. But we have to go to a break now. Yep. You're watching Net Chat. Stay with us. We'll be back with more very shortly. And welcome back to Nat Chat. I'm Marella Rich. If you've just joined us, we're here with Celia Denny, who has 13 children and she's homeschooling them. And she's a wonderful mum. We call her Miracle Mum. Well, I do anyway. <laughs> welcome to the program. Welcome back. Now, I would like to talk a little bit about being calm, like teaching yeah. us how to be calm, because they're parents with one child, two child, three children, um, but they lose it all the time. They yeah. just, there's this non-stop screaming or shouting and there's no behaviour and there's no um, obedience with the children. Yep. What, can, what sort of advice could you give them on how to manage their um, emotions without losing um, it with the children? Because children yep. are children, so they're going to want their own way. All these kind of dynamics are going on with the family. I think um, first and foremost, um, your child isn't being irritating to wind you up. He's... There'll, there'll be something. He's hungry, he's tired, you've decided to do the groceries after a long day at school or a day out, he's going to be irritable. Um, so I think not to, insure, not to assume guilt or um, malice on the part of your child. And then secondly, if you forget everything else when you've gone out, always take your sense of humour. Um, mm. Model the behaviour you want to see. If you want your child to be calm, you've got to be calm. And then, you know, another thing, what do you want your child's memories to be made of? There's a, a happy, calm mum and dad or an angry, aggressive mum and dad because that's what they will do for their children. Mm. So um, it's very easy to get angry when you're out in public, you can't find parking or you, you know, you're short of cash as we usually are and you, you've got a budget to stick to and... Um, but those are just side issues. You, you've, you've got to, it's only today you need to worry about. It's only today, it's only right now doing the right thing. Um, and the right thing to do is not to lose your temper. Least well in public and shout at your child, he's not doing that deliberately. Um, if he's 
playing up, you know, I want this, I want that, then you've got to set the good habits. You've got to say, we don't buy um, junk when we're out. So you've just got to, and you've got to do it all the time. Mm. And then they, they learn. Mm. And, if, um, and if it's a case that you think oh, it's, it's getting out of hand, then you might need to think, well, what solutions can I provide? You know, if, if I'm going out, um, I'm going to grab some sandwiches before I go. You know, or, or we'll just have a good time out. Or it'll, it's, it's frustrating to see mums shouting at children and it's, it's just not the child's fault. And I sort of, I want to go up to, even to the women and say, you, you actually don't have to do that. You, you're free, you don't, you don't have to do that. You know, there's a time out with your child. Spend that time together. You know, look at the, the clothes in the shops or, um, you know, browse through, look at the people. What are the other people doing mm. in the shops? So it's just to be, take a sense of humour with you. It, it's, it's really not that bad. Mm. It really isn't. You know, um, if you, your child is cranky and he's scratchy and, and you just give him a hug. Nothing, nothing wrong foots a kid when it's chucking a temper tantrum just to, just to envelope that child in, in a loving hug if you can, mm. you know, or a, a squeeze of the arm or, or come on, just a little bit longer and we'll, we'll go home or whatever, mm. whatever it might do. But, but calmness starts with me. It, it starts with the, the one who's supposed to be in control. Mm. Um, and I'm not calm when I'm loud mm. or aggressive or angry or slapping at a child. Mm. So, um, and it's not fair on them. Mm. Um, we've found a chap called Dr. Ray Guarendi, or I have. Um, a friend put me on to him. He's an American um, child psychiatrist. He has 10 of his own children, which mm -hmm. he's adopted. Uh, wow. he, and, he and his wife adopted special needs children because she couldn't have any of her own. Gee. She's homeschooled them. Um, oh. Possibly she should be a doctor or something as well. But, but... He's excellent for discipline. So that's Dr. Ray Gurendi. He's, you know, buy books or you can, uh, you know, he's, on, he's online. And you've read his books or you've seen him yeah, online? Yeah, we, we bought, I bought a couple. What's, what's the, his name? He's an American chap. It's, it's Dr. Ray and it's Gurendi, G-U-A-R-I. And so, so it's Gurendi. Okay. And what are the names? Do you know the names of his books off by heart? Or? Um, no, I don't. But it's, it's, it's things like, you know, um, discipline for the teen years, mm, you teen know, years which, which yeah. people are worrying about. Yeah. And, and um, it's very grounded, very common sense stuff. And it does, but it does involve mum taking a look at herself or, or dad taking a look at himself. You know, and it's knowing too that when something's gone wrong, you actually don't need to deal with it there and then. If it's very bad, you can say, right, um, you know, I've, I've lost my temper right now, so you're going to step away and I'm going to step away mm. and we'll be calmer then. Yeah. So come back. If it's that bad, step away. Yeah, there's a few books. That, there's another book out called Scream Free Parenting. Okay. I and they, they sort of talk about, like, giving the children a discipline. Like, if they don't do what they're told, they're just, they, take, they don't scream at the child. They just take something away. Okay, you're going to behave like that. If you do this... You lose this. So I no think that backfires. But there's a I think that backfires. Yeah. Um, to me, um, there has to be a case where the child accepts, and if you like, internalizes your authority and their obedience. And just removing something m may not, you know, might solve the problem for some behaviours, but not for others. And when you're out, you, that child, and you need to know that there are behaviours that you're going to have to accept, and you're going to be calm. You're going to be cheerful. It's, it's good fun. You're out. Have fun. Hmm. That's beautiful. It's, good to, it's really lovely speaking to you about this on these topics because these, yeah. aren't, these aren't just homeschool issues. These are no. just parental issues. That's right. Bringing up children because we want to bring up children that, you know, are great in society. In society. You know, they want well their own behaved, children when they're older. Yeah. They look back on their childhood as a place of security, of love and of confidence. Um, and I, I don't think just by shouting at them like that, I don't think that's going to, it's, it's not going to happen. Mm. Okay, that's beautiful. You can't get it all wrong today. Yeah. But yeah. today's today is probably the most important day that matters. Oh, yeah. And so you don't believe in the, the scream-free idea where they take something away if the behaviour, so they know if they do that behaviour. If it was a case where there was, there was fighting over that object, 
that's mm. when I'd take the object away. Mm. But to say, oh, I, I see you've inadvertently, you know, you've smashed a, a window with a cricket ball, that's it, you've lost your train set. It doesn't, doesn't make sense, it doesn't connect up. There, there has to be, you know, your, your child needs to know that if there is a punishment, you are going to carry through on it, and it's reasonable. Okay, we have to go to a break yeah. now. You're watching Net Chat. Stay with us, we'll be back with more very shortly. Hello and welcome back to Nat Chat. I'm Marilla Rich. We're here with Celia Denny who has 13 children and she's homeschooled 12 of them. She's done a wonderful job and she's done a wonderful job also in bringing up her children to be well-mannered, respectful, kind, loving, happy children. Welcome back to the program, Celia. Now just as just for every parent really, we're, we're bringing up our children to become good citizens, good adults who don't mm. run into problems in you know when they're adults so what are the some of the things as a child in the way that you would discipline them when they do the wrong thing what are some of the other things you did we talked a little bit off camera about some of the methods you use with saying a hail mary and what's the benefit of that and what it is okay um, um prayer is certainly something that we turn to um because it lifts our hearts and minds to god who created us and also son of course who died on the cross for our sins, but in our family setting, um, we recognise that disobedience um, brings discord and, and unhappiness and aggression, so that has to be undone. And it's undone through reparation for what you've done, which is a punishment. But not only just a punishment to say, okay, you've, you've lost a freedom or a privilege, uh, you have to do something as well. So I've used window washing, um, floor washing, pegging washing online. I've used those as punishments because they're, you do something for someone else, whether it's for the, not only the person you've injured, but the whole organic body, which is your family. Um, it helps all of them. When you've done this, you've got a little time. You know, the child has a little bit of time to mull over what he or she has done. Mm. I've had them write essays I've still got some that I treasure, mm. <laughs> that I got um, my daughter, who's now 18, to write. Um, it's either essays or lists of why I should not have done um, whatever that thing might have been. It might have been harm harmful gossip or um, hurtful words. Another thing I like to do, if there's been a particular amount of fighting between two of the siblings, is they have to do something for each other. Um, so sometimes it's an act of forgiveness for somebody to either make tea or coffee or get some biscuits or cake for the person who's injured them as much as it has to come back the other way. You know, the person who has oh, wow. committed the offence mm -hmm. also has to make that, have that generosity in their heart to, to say, I'm sorry, to, to apologise for their actions. Um, most of the kids have discovered it's a bit harder to forgive than it is to apologise. Um, but if if we can't get that rot out with so many people in the house, it could probably pretty rapidly deteriorate mm. into an unmanageable situation. Mm. Um, so that forgiveness has to flow. The kids have to see that myself and John also try. Sometimes it doesn't work. Married couples have bad days too. Yeah. Um, to have at least that forgiveness or that charity or the forbearance. Sometimes the, the only person I can change is me. Mm. Um, so I'm the only person who is able to sit down and say, I have to take a different attitude to um, some other person in the house, you know, whatever it might be, causing trouble or giving grief or just having a problem. Mm. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And do you find through all these methods that the love grows deeper as a family through going through these difficult times, but going through them, like and going beyond them. Um, certainly, the like the fa we have our own family history. You know, if you like, it's it's been going for for twenty odd years. That's twenty years of, of history, and we we can't throw it away, and we we can't imperil it in any fashion because we we have to build another twenty years. You know, as 
kids get older. Um, and for us to do that means just doing the right thing here and now, today. In the present moment, yeah. Exactly. And as far as socialisation, because you often hear about socialisation yeah. um, when people say you're homeschooling, oh, well, what about their social skills? Well, I can tell you just looking at your children, they've got impeccable social skills. They can talk to anyone at any age level. They're all happy. They're all smiling. They're lovely children. They even bring tears to my eyes because they're so sweet. You know, even the boys, teenage boys, yeah. very sweet. Teenage boys are great. Well-mannered, you yeah. know. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what you've understood about socialisation in your experience? Um, well, <laughs> define socialisation. The people who say to me, oh, what about the socialisation, have generally stopped me at an Irish dancing class where they're all socialising quite well with, <laughs> you know, all the other kids or they've... Um, it's a case where they've just finished complaining about something their school has done or something that their child did at school, all in the name of socialisation. So I'm... Um, I'm a bit of a sceptic when it comes to socialisation. There's probably a lot of children who have experienced bullying right today at school. Well, that's socialisation. It's just not very nice socialisation. So you've got to be able to choose that for your children. I'm allowed to make choices um, which will make my children um, better, more functional adults. Bullying does not make functional adults. You know, not all socialisation works. Exactly, yeah, because, it, I mean, especially, you often hear that about schools as well. There's a lot of bullying going on in the schools mm. and social media and, like, tragic to the point of tragedy, like, yeah. take, li literally taking their own lives. And these are children. This should not be happening. So what are some ad advice you could give some other um, families, perhaps, who are struggling with this, even if they are at school or whether they're homeschooling? Yeah. I'd say if you're at school, try homeschooling. Just try it. Yeah. Try it for 12 months. Um, probably the the one who's going to have to make most changes is the parent. Is the parent? It's not going to be the child. And the child is. I found my children pretty pragmatic. If I want to try an experiment, oh, here she goes again. You know, try something new mm. again. Um, and and they do. They just do it because this is what adults do. Obviously, adults do strange things, and and this is another strange thing that mm. she wants to try with us. And try, try it. Um, you probably enjoy it a whole lot more than you think and you yeah. just really renew your relationship with your children. And do you find homeschooling the children, also for those who are probably interested in homeschooling, yeah. that it has changed your relationship, we well, you haven't done anything else, but it yeah. has built the relationship with your children better than Oh, I'd say so. I, yeah. think, um, I think they know me as well as I know them. Uh, I probably didn't really get to know my parents until after I left school. You, know, you live in the same house but we go to school. We'd leave the house at maybe 7.30, 8 in the morning. We'd be home at 4.35 at night. You know. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the program. It's been an absolute joy to have you here. You've been watching Nat Chat. I'm Mirella Rich and our guest was Celia Denny. Hope you enjoyed the program. See you again soon. Bye.